to uh, basically uh, convert to Islam. Because uh, in 1998 was when I, I realized that, yeah, it was time. And I, uh, there was an imam that came from Mauritania at the time, and he... And I knew a lady who was who was Muslim, and she told me to come and listen to this imam. So I went and listened to him, and he asked me if I wanted to convert to Islam at the time, if I accepted Allah, and that's when, that's when I, you know, I came into Islam. And uh, thanks to that imam, uh, I was converted to Islam and got ra married right away, <laughs> right after that. And uh, ever since, it's been a blessing. So for me, like I said, Islam has been a revelation. I have learned a lot. I have grown a whole lot more through Islam. Uh, because in my culture, you know, the man dominated. And, you know, man did everything. Not Man didn't do everything, but uh, it was like we had the influence of Christianity where in the Bible it says woman, man is not made for woman, but woman for man. But when I learned about the Prophet Muhammad, how he served his wife, I was like, wow, I have been taught wrong. <laughs> you know, all my life I was taught that I was the man and I had to be act like a man, whatever that meant. If you imagine in that kind of society that, you know, uh, you know a man had to be the man and the woman had to subjugate herself to, to her husband and all these cliches. But yet, when I learned about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, you know, his character, that he helped his wife, that he was there, you know, even sawing her clothes, sawing her buttons, things like that, I realized, wow, this is, this is very humbling. This is very humbling. Because I learned about Jesus, but like I said, Jesus was more an equivalent of a superman. He walked on water, he did all these miracles, and so uh, he was deified, uh, you know, people, that's where Christians believed that he couldn't be a man doing all this stuff. Whereas the Prophet Muhammad, being a prophet, was like everybody else. He was somebody, peace be upon him, who, who was humble, who showed humility, who was not caught up into the sexist society as we see it today. You know, even though it's amazing that Islam is being accused of being a sexist religion, Whereas, you know, if you go into Christian religion, right in the Bible, it says man is not made for woman, but woman for man. Uh, you know, um, that was really a, one of the highlights of my life. This, uh, the, you know, reading that, learning that the Prophet Muhammad himself was so humble. He was a man among men. He was a statement among statements. You know, that, um, but the fact that he... <laughs> That impressed me the most was basically the fact that Prophet Muhammad helped his wife, you know. And I became, because of that, I hope, <laughs> I became a better husband, you know. I learned to get off my male, whatever, chauvinistic, as they call it, ideology uh, by learning, you know, by following the example of the Prophet mm -hmm. and helping in the house more. Cleaning, cleaning, uh, you know, taking care of my kids better rather than leaving everything to my wife. Uh, Islam helped me to change my character. You know, it changed me a lot, a whole lot. Um, I and that's why I'm still in Islam, and that's why. And every day I learn. I keep learning uh, things. And when we get together on Sundays we have the Imam lecture and I also learn uh, and we are able to ask questions and inquire more about Islam. Right. Um, one of the, I guess uh, one of the things that worried me was when I converted to Islam was how would I announce it to my parents because you know we, I came from a Christian background um, and when I spoke to my mother, I sp first I spoke to my mother, and she was, she didn't put up too much obstacle. My mother was easier than my father. My father was, he uh, almost, you know, went out of his head. <laughs> I mean, he was like cussing, you know, saying, hey, what? What are you doing? We, you know, we've been Christian. But at the same time, he, even though he was Christian, I told him, I said, you, didn't, you don't practice it. You, you haven't read the Bible. I said, I have read the Bible. I have read it from one end to the other, and I've seen the controversy. And, and in Islam, 
the Quran is straight. There's only one Quran, uh, whereas in the Bible you have uh, the Orthodox Christian Bible, which has 81 books, and then you have the um, what you call it, the um, Catholic Bible that came next. There was a translation of the Orthodox Greek Bible. And the Catholics ripped off nine books from the 81. So the Catholic has, like, I think, 72 or 73 books. I'm not sure exactly. So they took about nine books from the holy books of God and threw it away. <laughs> and by the time the Protestants got a hold of the King James Version, they ripped off another nine books. So the, 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 uh, uh, so the Bible went from 81 from... The, uh, 81 books or 72 by the Catholics, and by the time the, uh, uh, the the Protestants took a hold of the Bible, they ripped off another, they threw away another nine nine books of the Bible. So I had to explain to him because uh, he didn't know all these all these facts. But he was the one that was the most upset about it. The rest of my family, uh, some of my uh, cousins were like, "Yeah, we knew you were." You know, and they were Christian, and they, they were like, the way you used to speak, the way you used to act, you acted like a Muslim, so it doesn't surprise us, you know, that you converted to Islam, you know, and so that was my family reaction. Uh, it wasn't as harsh as some people, but I was already grown. I could face up to my parents, because I was already, when I converted to Islam, I was in 98, I was way up in my late 30s, so, um, yeah, like I said, uh, it was easier for me to face my family and tell them that no, this was my decision and they, that they needed to respect it. Uh, the, um, one of the harshest thing I had to deal with psychologically was to prepare myself for fasting because I had never fasted <laughs> in my life. Even uh, during the Christian uh, way, there's, there's what they call Lent before Easter. I tried it when I was in the army. I tried it like for half a day, and I couldn't do it. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I just quit. And I was like, man, how am I going to deal with this Ramadan? Thirty days, you know, one month of fasting. I've never done that before. But as I kept, you know, praying, uh, I think my first Ramadan, I only felt bad was like the first or second week weekend, it was on a Saturday, where it really hit me hard, and I kept pacing up and down, and I couldn't wait till the, uh, you know, till the sun went down, but I, had, I hung in there, I mean, I was going crazy, I mean, I kept walking up and down in my room, I didn't go anywhere, I was just in my room, <laughs> pacing up and down, waiting for the sun to go down, and, and doing my prayer and all that stuff, that was the hardest time, but once I made that, then uh, even my wife was surprised because she was like, she said, wow, for somebody who's a non-Muslim for your first Ramadan, it went easy. And every day she used to ask me, well, how are you doing? How are you doing? Uh, how's it going? And I was like, I'm fine. I'm fine. And thank God, uh, you know, I guess maybe that was the uh, the test for me that Allah gave me. Because ever since that, I've never felt that way. The Ramadan has become easier and easier ever since that time. Um, well, uh, I'd like to just talk directly to people who are thinking or are soul-searching like I was. And my advice to you is don't ignore Islam. You know, because I went from Christianity to Buddhism to Islam. You know, and I settled with Islam. So I would recommend if you are into Buddhism or if you're looking into Christianity or whatever, don't ignore Islam. Just go and read the Quran. Read it, find out what it's all about. Don't listen to the media because the media is biased. As we know, if you, you were live, we live in a Christian-dominated country, so therefore we can't expect you know, much good to come out of their media. So what I would recommend is for you to read for yourself. You know, go find out for yourself because even in the Bible it says, Seek the truth first and the rest shall be added unto you. So if you seek the truth, knowing that Allah is the truth, then your answers will be questioned. Well, your, your questions will be answered. Okay. So uh, that's my advice to people who are, who are soul-searching. Now, for people who are reverting, who are going through this family difficulty, 
what I, what I recommend for you to gain strength, what gave me strength is the prayers and the repetition, the practicing, uh, reading for understanding, reading the Quran for understanding, and see Allah will open your heart because it did to me. Because when I first read the Quran, it was like Allah talking to me. It was not, I read the Bible, but it wasn't the same. The Bible was a uh, history, a historical background of different prophets and to Judaism all the way down to Jesus Christ. Uh, whereas the Quran, Allah is directly talking to you. When you open it and you read it, that's what's going to give you the strength. So keep reading your Quran, keep coming to the, to the Masjid, keep praying, and focus on that alone. Focus on Allah alone. Don't let other things distract you because life is full of distraction as we know it. This is what shaitan counts on, the distraction. And as long as we're distracted, we're losing focus on the main prize. And the main prize is to get to paradise. And the way to get to paradise, the most consistent book is the Holy Quran that Allah has sent us. It is a miracle. It is a gift. It is a book of knowledge. Uh, and so uh, that's what I would recommend to people who are just converted. Stick to the book. Keep focused. Keep your eye on the prize. Because remember, the prize is Jannah. This life is temporary. We're just here on. We're just here temporarily. We're going through. We're like trans, transient passengers on this journey of life. So focus mo mostly on the Quran. Read your Quran. Follow the guidelines. And that will give you strength of conviction and give you understanding. Because that's what happened to me. And now for, for the Muslims, people who are born in Islam. I mean, I've known people who were born in Islam uh, when I was a Christian. <laughs> and they drank alcohol. <laughs> you know, they went to the bars and they did things. I met people who came to the United States or got wilder than anything else. I had students who were, and they got here and they took advantage and did everything. You know, uh, what I would say is keep your faith. Don't be distracted. Keep your eye on the price, you know, because the price is Jannah. We are only here for a short time. We don't know how long we're going to be here. So uh, for me, to the brothers who are Muslim, you know more than I do. I'm just a new person. I could not tell you how to practice Islam. You guys are born and bathed and baptized into it. You're immersed into it. But one thing that I recommend is that we need to be strong. This, this is the time to get together as Muslims, to know other Muslims who are not from, maybe from your culture, from the same background as you. Don't fear. Don't be afraid. Approach them because you might learn something from reverts. You might learn something about this country that they know that you don't know. You know? And so we need to come together. And as Allah said, the Ummah has to be one. And once the Ummah is one, then the world will be better. You know? As, and that should be our goal rather than divide ourselves into Shiite and Sunni and all, and all these little political games that are going on. It has to be something. As long as we are all looking at what we, our commonalities rather than our differences, I think we can work together. And I recommend, highly recommend peace. Like Allah says, salam to everybody. That's the key goal between us. If we have peace and understanding, then we will go a long way.